This is the fossil sport. And the fossil sport has a few things going for it, such as the price. Starting at $100, this smartwatch get a lot done with a little. But is it enough? And can Wear OS make a stand? Well, let's start with the design and hardware of this smartwatch. This smartwatch has an aluminum and plastic build, aluminum on the top, plastic at the bottom, near a heart rate sensor that can also count your steps, just like any you know, normal fitness tracker. But what's different is that this smartwatch runs Wear OS, which means it can do a lot more than that. The Wear OS interface includes notifications by going down or using the digital crown. Well, more like a scroll wheel, but it's very convenient. Quick settings at the top along with your music, if you're playing any. Swipe over to the right or to the left, I don't know. It's kind of like swiping is hard. <laughs> you see a Google feed, which mine is currently empty because I'm not really doing a lot. And then you have your tiles, which I love. For example, you have your calendar. I have nothing on my calendar right now. My weather, my my stopwatch, and my heart steps. So, on obviously, Wear OS is pretty well equipped for with out of the box features and apps. But where Wear OS starts to show its struggle is when you go to apps, real apps, third-party apps, not inbox apps. So a click of the crown will get you to the apps. Here I have some, but the problem isn't that the apps are, that there aren't enough apps. You're, you're not actually going to be using a lot of apps on a smartwatch. It's mostly for notifications, but the problem arises when you're opening the apps that you are using. Uh, for me, that's Todoist and maybe Google Fit, sometimes messages. But when opening it, it takes a, a good long while. I estimate about four seconds. Unacceptable. Absolutely not. The, the real problem behind that is the Snapdragon 3100 chipset that's powering the Fossil Sport and a lot of the other smartwatches in Fossil's generation. Ge that would be Gen 5, by the way. The 3100 is still based off of a ancient 28 nanometer process with A7 cores that are just, I don't know. Thankfully, Qualcomm has recently announced the 4100 and I did run an article about how that gives hope to Wear OS, but for now, the 3100 just isn't enough. Thankfully, it also includes a co-processor that's a lot more modern with the 7 nanometer process. That runs the thing in ambient mode, which basically means it handles notifications and the always on display if you choose to do that. So what about what about that display? So let's talk about that. So the display is quite good. It's touch, obviously, but sometimes that processor continues to struggle and I have to tap things twice. Here in this demonstration, I probably won't have to, but other times I will. Sometimes it just won't register your touch. And other times you have to tap twice to get to a specific touch target. Obviously, this kind of needs some work, and a lot of that blame falls on the processor. But the screen itself is fine, and the ambient mode, aka always on display, is super convenient. But it does eat away at battery life, which we gotta talk about. So Wear OS has always been known for terrible battery life. And again, the processor. But it's also the operating system itself. So smartwatches don't have a lot of room for milliamps, like smartphones. So the way smartwatches make up for this is through efficiency. But here, Fossil has to muscle its way through it. So it gives you custom battery settings. Here we have daily, extended, custom, and time only. Time only will make your watch last for a week and a half. Sometimes even more, because it's just time. 
then you have your custom where you can customize your watch settings to the way you want but um buyers beware custom if you enable the wrong settings at the wrong time at the wrong place you could end up killing your battery in a few hours flat not even kidding so be careful with that custom setting i suggest sticking to either the daily or extended mode the daily mode is what i usually use daily is a combination of the always on display and a few other things it will require nightly charging but it is mighty convenient and will make for, for a pretty good experience just make sure you have a charge to get back to by say 12 12 o'clock at night probably more but just make sure you have a charger to get back to when you're done extended however is better for going more than one day extended mode will give you a few days as necessary but it will cut some corners no always on display not even tilt to wake you must tap the button or tap the screen to check the time and act on notifications and do whatnot add bluetooth will turn off at 10 p.m which is actually quite nice gives you a little bedtime cushion cushion but you know what i don't think wear os should even need those battery life modes just to get good battery life a smartwatch is a smartwatch and a lot of people don't dare to dig into the settings they just want it the way it comes and they want it right there and then and if you don't give it to them right there and then maybe wear os just isn't for you so obviously google and fossil needs to improve on their process for for making smartwatches and qualcomm oh qualcomm we i really hope the snapdragon 4100 can finally make progress and somewhat save wear os but they've already done so much damage is there anything left to save i don't know but for a hundred dollars i think the fossil sport makes a compelling case for those buying a smartwatch for the first time and if you get an amazing deal you can even get it for 80 dollars which at that point becomes a steal so it really depends on what your priorities are and if you just want a basic smartwatch the fossil sport is your watch hey thanks for watching please head over to bentechco.blogspot.com for more articles and reviews and please subscribe and like while you're here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.